السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات ہوپ یو آر آل ڈوئنگ ویل دس از کلیم عزیز اینڈ ویلکم ٹو مائی انادر ویڈیو آفٹر لانگ ٹائم اٹ ہیز ریئلی بینگ اے لانگ ٹائم سنس آئی اپلوڈ اٹ ویڈیو ان مائی چینل اینڈ دا ریزن واز نتھنگ جسٹ لیزینس ٹوڈے ویڈیو از ویری اسپیشل ویڈیو اٹ از ویری اسینشیل ویڈیو بیکاز اینڈ اٹ از ناٹ اٹ از فار آل پاکستانیز بٹ اسپیشلی فار دا پیپل آف خیبر پختونخوا دوز پیپل وہ آر انٹرسٹیڈ ان دا ہسٹری آف خیبر پختونخوا بیکاز ان دس ویڈیو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ریکمینڈ یو ا بک آن دا ہسٹری آف خیبر پختونخوا ا ویری گڈ بک اینڈ ایز ویل ایز آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو شیئر ا بریف سمری آف آف یو نو آف دس بک and uh, i will be explaining uh, each chapter tentatively and uh, so that you will have uh, a tentative idea before uh, reading this book and uh, it 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 might be interesting for you uh, it is said that if you don't have an idea about your history so your example is like a rootless tree Uh, I feel history plays a very indispensable role in our lives and uh, if you know uh, the world history if you have a proper idea about the history so by reading history by by having a proper uh, you know understanding of history we can avoid those mistake uh, we can avoid those blunders which were made by the people in the past and uh, we can take a proper decision in the present and therefore we can progress in the future by uh, learning from our by learning from our mistakes so which is why uh, the reason i uh, i choose this topic i choose this topic to uh, to to explain uh, and to recommend you this book the reason is there are many things uh, which are going on in our province in Khyber Pukhtunkhwa and uh, you know you can see there is terrorism in in Khyber Pukhtunkhwa for a long time first it became a front line a front line state <coughs> excuse me it became a front line state in 1980s in the Afghan Soviet war then again after 9/11 again it became uh, a front line state and uh, there were a huge new number of casualties you know in in this provinces and uh, still people are being suffered uh, from uh, uh, from uh, by by this terrorism which is still going on in our country ttp tehreek e taliban pakistan and uh, which keeps on attacking on our places for example recently there there was an attack on police on on a mosque located inside police headquarters peshawar and uh, as a result of that attack about 84 people uh, they were brutally killed by the terrorist uh, before that uh, there was another a very uh, sorrowful tragedy took place in 2014 uh, which was an attack on army public school peshawar and resultantly 140 uh, children were brutally uh, killed by the terrorist so the reason is uh, people are confused that why there is terrorism in khyber pakhtunkhwa secondly there uh, there is another uh, there are some other question uh, which exist in our society for example uh, some uh, you know whenever we talk about the history of khyber pakhtunkhwa so there are some groups which think that it should have been a part of the afghanistan not pakistan there are some groups uh, which think that it should be a separate land whose name uh, should be pakhtunistan land of pakhtuns a separate land and uh, <coughs> uh, there are some other you know uh, you know issues for example uh, in in fata there have been a conflict for a long time and uh, the issue which 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 exists today uh, you know which is related to terrorism so it also originated from the uh, from the from the tribal areas uh, which took place uh, which came into surface after 9/11 so <clears throat> there there are all these question so what is the main reason 
people are confused. What is the main reason why the people of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are, are, are being affected from, uh, from this terrorism? And uh, there are conflict with Afghanistan. People wants to be a part of Afghanistan. Some people wants to be a part of Pakistan. And so what is the main reason? So in this regard, I have decided to, to recommend you this book. Because you know, <clears throat> you will only have answer of all these questions once you have a proper uh, idea about the history of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And the history of Khyber, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is very confusing. If you look at the history of all the provinces, for example, Punjab, Balochistan, and Sindh, so you will uh, you will find out that the history of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is a very confusing because uh, whenever we read the history of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, so you know uh, we need to go through the history of Afghanistan because it is directly interlinked with the history of Afghanistan. So uh, without wasting any time, uh, let's get started. These are essays. Uh, these are essays on different topics. So I'm going to explain uh, the uh, uh, each chapter and uh, tentatively not in detail because it is a very huge uh, book. So I may not be able to explain all the book and uh, I'm just going to uh, share and give you a brief and uh, a brief um, idea, a brief explanation so that you will have, uh, you know, uh, some uh, some idea. Uh, first of all, let me talk about the author of this book. This book has been written by Sultani Room. Uh, interestingly, uh, he belongs to Pakistan Swat, uh, and uh, uh, he was a professor in the Department of History in Government Postgraduate Janzeb College, and uh, he has been in HOD, and now he is retired. Uh, he has published many book. Uh, from Sfort and uh, for example uh, on the history of Swat and uh, on the history of my uh, Mia Gul dynasty and the administration system of the then ruler of Swat. So he is a very prominent and uh, inimicable author and uh, you know one of my favorite uh, when it comes to the history of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, in the first chap uh, in the first chapter, he talks uh, he, he talks about the the geography of this province. Uh, I'm going to uh, in the geography of this province. Uh, I'm talking about the geography which the map the map the map of this province which used to be exist before 2018 because before 2018 there were uh, many parts of this province. It was comprised of um, comprised of many parts in many parts for example settled areas and then fata and then pata and then frontier regions so uh, i'm going to uh, share the uh, the picture of the the map of this province which used to be exist in 2018 you can see on your screen uh, there are some settled areas, you know, Peshawar, Kwat, Lucky Marwa, Day Khan, these were settled areas. Then uh, there was Fata, which was composed of uh, seven agencies, um, Bajawar agencies, Mumban agencies, Khaybar agencies, Uraqzai agencies, Kurum agencies, North Waziristan and South Waziristan. Then um, the, the, there is Fata, you can see, uh, which, uh, uh, which is uh, composed of uh, uh, three princely states, Chatral, Deer and Swat. Now there is no Fata and Pata and frontier regions. Collectively we call it Khyber Pukhtunkhwa because in 2018 uh, a, a resolution was passed in the parliament under which all these areas were emerged in the province of Khyber Pukhtunkhwa and they uh, each are, uh, each is today a district and uh, there is no Fata and Pata and agencies. Uh, but uh, uh, I will talk about the, the the system which used to be exist before 2018 because there is a main confusion before the people that what what was the history of Fata and what was the history of Pata and w why Pakistan why people say that it should it should have been a part of the terrorism. So the first chapter is on the history of uh, on on the geography of uh, this uh, this province. He discussed the geography, the uh, political division and then uh, mountains and rivers and some other you know 
things which are related to geography so it is indispensable to understand the geography of khyber pakhtunkhwa because to understand the history of any country or any uh, province or any state or any city so first of all you must have a proper idea about the geography of that concerned state uh, so it will be easy for you to understand its history in the second chapter he talks about uh, the origin of pakhtuns who were pakhtuns it is still a mystery uh, but there are three main theories uh, which are discussed uh, whenever we talk about the 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 origin of pakhtuns the first theory a famous theory that is that pakhtuns were from bani israel bani israel they were the they were the descendants of uh, uh, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam who was the son of Ishaq alayhi salam and who was the son of Ibrahim alayhi salam so uh, the 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 nation the descendants of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam are called uh, Bani Israels so according to uh, according to this theory that uh, when Bakhnasar who was a, a ruler of Babylon so when he attack on Jerusalem in 587 and 586 BC uh, so he killed uh, millions of people and uh, millions of people and they uh, put some uh, into uh, uh, into into prisons so during this attack uh, some uh, jewish they uh, they got away from the uh, from the jerusalem and they migrated to afghanistan so uh, according to this theory Uh, the, the the jewish who came from jerusalem and they migrated uh, to afghanistan so they became a pakhtuns uh, but uh, whenever we talk about uh, there is also a critical analysis uh, after explaining each uh, theories so it is a theory of bani israel the second theory is pakhtuns were aryans aryans were you know famously known as indo european they came from the Ural mountains and according to this theory when they came from Ural mountains so some branches of this uh, of, of of these people they migrated to uh, they went to Europe and settled there and some came here so according to this theory pakhtuns are from aryans and uh, there is another theory uh, which is mixed theory mixed race sorry the third theory is mixed race it means that pakhtuns are both the mixed race of jewish and aryans so uh, these are three theories which have been comprehensively expounded in this book and uh, uh, after explaining each theory so the author uh, have given a critical evaluation and uh, you know so you can understand who were pakhtuns and what was the origin of pakhtuns uh, so it is very important uh, to have our our idea that who are we who are pakhtuns we are bani israel we are aryans and we are mixed race of both uh, jewish and both uh, aryans so the second uh, chapter is on this that what was the origin of pakhtuns in the third uh, in the third chap- uh, chapter it is a very interesting chapter because uh, uh, here we can uh, we can get uh, we can know that uh, what was uh, who what was the uh, the history of this provinces according to the author the history of khyber pakhtunkhwa starts uh, with the establishment of the durrani empire in afghanistan durrani empire it was the first empire of afghanistan which was established by the ahmad shah abdali who is considered to be the modern uh, who is con- considered to be the founder of modern afghanistan it is said that ahmad shah abdali he was a right hand of nadir khan who was a ruler of uh, iran and after his death uh, he became a ruler and he amalgamated all the fragmented tribes and he uh, made a country uh, namely afghanistan so uh, when he established uh, durrani empire he became the ruler of durrani empire after amalgamation of fragmented tribes so uh, this part of khyber pakhtunkhwa which today exists in pakistan so it 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 was a part all these territories were a part of the durrani empire uh, then for the ahmad shah abdali extended uh, its boundaries up to lahore and then he reached to delhi but he couldn't rule there and he came back to afghanistan uh, then the uh, the other further explained that uh, um, 
later on there was another empire uh, empire which came into being in Lahore in the province of Lahore famously known as Sikh Empire and uh, there was a great ruler whose name was Ranjit so Ranjit Singh there were some conflicts there were some battles between the Durrani empire and Ranjit Singh and resultantly the settled area uh, Peshawar Kuwad and this settled area except tribal areas so it came under the control of Sikh Empire. Uh, with the passage of time, there was another great empire, uh, British Empire, East India Company. Uh, they were annexing the territories in, in India at the same time. So uh, there was, uh, the author further explained that there was a great game in Asia between the British Empire and there was another great empire, Russian Empire, which was in the north. So it was also extended its both its boundaries toward the south so British uh, it was uh, it was uh, frightened that uh, the British the, the Russian Empire may annex its territories so then Afghanistan became a buffer state between the British Empire and the Russia Empire and uh, then uh, it was uh, the British realized that uh, uh, they must have a control over these tribal areas and these frontier regions. So there, then there were a series of battles between the Sikh Empire and the British Empire and resultantly in uh, till 1849 these settled areas uh, came under the control of British Empire. So first it was under the Durrani Empire then uh, uh, Sikh Empire and now um, it, it came under the control of the British Empire uh, then but uh, when in 1849 the British uh, controlled these uh, settled areas uh, so the tribal areas uh, so the tribal areas were not under the control of the British Empire it was uh, in, uh, in, in in 1879 when the British annexed the Khyber agencies then in 1892 it annexed the, uh, the, the, the Kurum agency and then in 1895 it annexed uh, North Waziristan and as well as the Pata region Swat, Indir and Chatral and then at the end in 1898 it annexed uh, the South Waziristan. So one by one all these agencies came under the British control and till 18 98 all these agencies seven agencies were under the control of british empire and then uh, you know uh, he also explained the duran line the duran line is the international boundary between the pakistan and afghanistan so it was uh, the demarcation of this boundary uh, was done in 1893 between the uh, duran mortimer mortimer duran and uh, uh, the then ruler of afghanistan uh, Abdul Rahman. Uh, so there was a conflict between the uh, the government of Afghanistan and the Britons that uh, where should be the Durand line. So the British deliberately annexed, uh, you know, uh, the the tribal areas, the Fata areas, and the Afghan government was against this because it uh, didn't want it to be a part of the British Empire. So this is where the conflict started. After this demarcation, there, there is another chapter where the author explained the uprising of the tribal people uh, against the British Empire, which took place in 1898. In 18, so in 1898, all the uh, peoples of the tribal, uh, they, uh, they got together and they, uh, you know, rebelled, uh, rebelled against the the British Empire but they were suppressed by the British uh, so now then after after this you know when they suppressed the uh, tribal peoples so after that uh, the British decided to separate the frontier region from the province of uh, from the province of Punjab so before 1901 it was in 1901 when NWFP province came into being. Before 1901, there was no province in the name of NWFP. So it was in 1901 when the British separated this frontier region from the province of uh, from the province of Punjab, uh, which was a settled areas. And uh, you know they also 
prepared and introduced a separate system for example fcr system frontier crime regulation systems so when it was separated from the punjab province so the uh, all the uh, all the laws which were applicable in the rest of the provinces of the british empire so it was not granted to the nwfp frontier regions so then uh, and it was uh, you know all the uh, provinces uh, of the british empire in india so they were administered by the governors whereas these frontier uh, nwfp regions Uh, so it was administered by the chief commissioner from 1901 to 1932 and then it was in 1932 when uh, this area uh, it was made uh, a, a governorship province and governor was you know deployed in order to uh, control and monitor this province and then all the laws which were applicable in the rest of the provinces so it uh, became active in this frontier region too but interestingly the region of tribal areas it remained isolated area and the laws were not applicable uh, in in this region and uh, the british deployed uh, political agent this is when the political agents came into being and uh, in each agencies the british deployed political agents and through political agents they administered those area indirectly because the british knew the mindset of the people they saw the uprising in 1898 of the by the tribal uh, people so they uh, they were worried that if they would directly administer this area so there would be you know there would be a conflict so in order to avoid any issue any conflict so the british deployed political agents in fata in each uh, agency and uh, uh, to administer this area and uh, then uh, in 1947 so uh, it was an administration system then in 1947 uh, when the british decided under the 3rd june plan that uh, there should be a two separate land india and pakistan so then uh, the british uh, conducted a referendum in nwfp and uh, after that the people decided to be exceeded with pakistan uh, so these areas came under the control of pakistan including the tribal areas but pakistan it it made under nwfp a separate province but the administration system and all the political system of the tribal areas it remained the same it 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 couldn't be changed after the independence of pakistan the issue between afghanistan and pakistan arises after 1947 Uh, because after the independence of pakistan afghanistan refused to accept duran line as international border between afghanistan and pakistan and refused pakistan to be uh, especially khyber pakhtunkhwa astral nwfp to be a legitimate province and a part of the pakistan so it demanded pakistan to be handed over uh, this area because it was according to them they claimed that since it was a part of durani empire so it should be a part of Uh, Afghanistan but Pakistan refused because it was the British empire and according to Pakistan the decision was uh, was uh, was taken by both the British rulers and the then ruler of Afghanistan uh, Abdul Rahman and it was also uh, you know revived in the treaty of Rawalpindi which took place in 1921 uh, after the independence of Afghanistan Uh, for your information it is still a dispute between uh, the government of afghanistan and the government of pakistan because the government of afghanistan and the people of afghanistan they still uh, you know refuse to accept duran line as a legitimate boundary and as an international boundary between afghanistan and pakistan and this is the main reason the tribal areas Uh, the people of the tribal areas you know they refused to accept this boundary if you visit to the tribal areas so you you will get to know that the people they live on the side of pakistan and on the on the other side of afghanistan they 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 keep on going there and they uh, do their job and you know agriculture and uh, everything for for their livelihood so the people of afghanistan they still do not accept the boundary of duran line so this is the main reason there is still you know an issue going on uh, in 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 those areas so in order to understand uh, 
uh, uh, in details the history of uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, political history of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa that when it was a part of the Durrani Empire then came under Sikh Empire then came under British and then uh, became a part of Pakistan. So uh, please uh, read this book. Uh, further, uh, there is another chapter which is on the life of uh, Bacha Khan and his movement Khudai Khidmatkar. Uh, if uh, personally, if I, if I talk about myself, so since childhood I read in the books and I was told, you know, by many people since childhood that Bacha Khan he was a traitor and uh, by saying that he was against the partition of Pakistan and he is still considered to be uh, a traitor in Pakistan. Uh, it is completely a wrong perception which have been created by the Muslim leaguers, you know, the Muslim leaguers. Bacha Khan Khidmatgar, uh, Khudai Khidmatgar movement, uh, servants of God in English. Uh, so it was a very great movement. Bacha Khan, he uh, got, you know, his history and his life history is, uh, uh, has expounded, uh, has been expounded uh, meticulously in this book. If you are interested in the history of Bacha Khan, so uh, there is his autobiography in the name of, uh, in Pashto, uh, its name is the Ma Jun and Jadu Jahid and uh, in English its name is My Life and My Struggle. So if you are interested in the history of Bacha Khan, so please uh, read that book. Uh, Bacha Khan, he got his early education, uh, he was born in 1890 and then he got his early education uh, from, uh, yeah, from uh, uh, Missionary Memorial uh, School. Uh, which was a Christian school and uh, so uh, during his uh, uh, his school uh, so he got impressed uh, from one of his teacher whose name was EFE e. Vigram and uh, you know he the teacher inculcated nationalism patriotism humanitarianism and some other things in his mind so then he decided to do something for the Pakhtuns. So he established Khudai Khidmatgar movement and the purpose of Khudai Khidmatgar movement was to, to educate our people and to eliminate all the, uh, all the glitches, all the old and a very bad custom from the Pakhtun society. And, uh, and for that he established uh, you know, an association's purpose was to work to eliminate the glitches from the society of Pakhtuns. Bacha Khan, he know, he, uh, uh, he, he, he struggled a lot uh, for the people and uh, to raise the people of Pakhtuns because the people of Pakhtuns, uh, that time, they, they were uh, living in a very backward situation. Uh, they were illiterate and you know there was honor killing, there were blood, sh um, you know, they were in a very bad situation. So Bacha Khan, he uh, worked to raise the uh, social status of Pakhtuns and uh, you know his uh, affiliation was with Congress, All India Congress. And so if you are interested in the history in order to understand the struggle of Bacha Khan, so please go for this book. And uh, then uh, further, there are some other things which are related to the province of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. So uh, these are these have been discussed uh, in the in, in the last chapter. For example, the modern history of uh, uh, these provinces. So uh, sorry, this video will get longer. Uh, so I am going to finish. Uh, again, it is a very interesting book, and I I repeat the quote which I mentioned in the beginning that those people who do not have an idea about their history, their culture, and their custom, their rituals. So their example is like a rootless tree. Being a Pukhtun, uh, you know, Pukhtun, there are about 80 millions or more than 80 millions Pukhtun in, in the world. Uh, and uh, we are a very, uh, you know, a very uh, talented nation in the world. Uh, but we have the potential to, uh, to do something. And uh, uh, you know, so you must have an idea about your history, your culture, and you should be uh, you should be uh, proud uh, on your uh, on your culture and on your history. And never get uh, you know discouraged. And uh, so, uh, please read this book. Once again, I uh, I am suggesting this book to all of you. Thank you very much, and take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.